a pleasant good night to everyone. We are so happy to be alive. I will read a text in your hearing. It's taken from Matthew 24, 14, and it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Let us pray. Our gracious and eternal Father, which art in heaven, we are so happy to be alive today. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. And we thank you for Jesus Christ who bought us salvation. He died on Calvary's cross. His blood was shed to wash us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help, O oh God, that we should accept it so we would be saved in your kingdom. At this time, I do lift this evangelistic meeting before you. Lord, we ask your mercies upon the preacher. We ask that you should give him strength and let the Holy Spirit move mightily on the hand, his heart, that as he preach, he may preach, thus said the Lord. And as the words go forth, he may go forth with power and authority and that it may rest on the hearts of men and women. Many people are living without a hope. Many people are dying without a hope. But God, we have hope in you, in Christ Jesus. And so we thank you for that privilege where you have granted unto us to accept you. You said today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, had not your heart. For you are speaking to us, O oh God, you are calling us. You said, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And we thank you for the opportunity whereby we can accept you before it is eternally too late. Time is short. You are coming soon. And so we have to be ready because when you come, you are coming for a prepared people. Those whose sins have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. So help God that the Holy Spirit may work on the hearts of men and women. And as they hear your words, they may accept you and give their all to you before it is eternally too late. We ask that you should take charge. Take charge of everything, dear Father, that will happen here night after night. Let the Holy Spirit move, dear God. And as the Holy Spirit move, we know that persons may accept you before it is eternally too late. We lift everybody worldwide before you and we ask your blessings. We ask your mercies. We ask your love for where sin abound, grace much more abound. Thank you, Lord, for grace. Thank you for your mercies. And dear God, as this platform is being used for your words to go forth, help dear God that hearts should be one to call the blessed and all of us with our loved ones would get ourselves ready prepared for when you bust the clouds of heaven we may say this is our lord we have waited long and we will live with you forever in the earth made you so we give you thanks we give you praise and we honor and glorify you we pray with thanksgiving we ask through jesus christ our lord amen and amen thank you jesus thank you father Good evening everyone and welcome to End Time Call Evangelistic Series. At this time we're going to have our song service. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you and bless your holy name for your love and your mercy towards us. As we are about to sing songs and praises unto your name, we pray that the Holy Spirit will draw the blindly close and turn our voices that we will sing lust that we pray in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Amen. Our first song is number <clears throat> 10, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Number 10. Praise is his gracious joy. 
Then shake hands with those nearby and give to them a smile. Welcome one, welcome all in Christ's name. I say welcome and stay blessed. Good night everyone and welcome back to another health tip. On tonight's health tip we are talking about the importance of water and its function in the body. Now the body uses water in all its cells, organs and tissues to help regulate its temperature and maintain other bodily functions. Now some of the benefits of water in, in the body. One, it lubricates the joints. Now, cartilage found in joints and the disc of the spine contain around 80% of water. Water forms saliva and mucus. Saliva helps us digest our food and keeps the mouth, nose and eyes moist. So this prevents friction and damage. So drinking water also keeps the mouth clean. Water delivers oxygen throughout the body. Blood is more than 90% of water and our blood carries oxygen to different parts of the body. Uh, it also boosts skin health and beauty. So with dehydration, the skin can become more vulnerable to skin disorder and premature wrinkling. It cushions the brain, spinal cord, and other sensitive tissue. So when we are dehydrated, that can affect our brain structure and function. Water also regulates body temperature, for it is stored in the middle layers of the skin, and it comes out to the skin surface as sweat when the body heats up. So as it evaporates, it cools the body. Now, water um, is important to the digestive system for the bowels need water to work properly. So when we are dehydrated, it can lead to digestive problem, um, constipation, and also acidic stomach. And when we have an, an acidic stomach, this increases the risk of heartburn and stomach ulcers when we do not consume enough water. It helps to flush the body waste as it is needed in the process of um, sweating and removal of urine and feces. It also helps maintain blood pressure. Lack of water can cause blood to become thick, thicker, increasing blood pressure. It makes minerals and nutrients accessible and it prevents kidney damage. So in health and in sickness, pure water provides one of heaven's choices blessings. Its proper use promotes health. Now, it is a beverage which God provides to quench the thirst of both man and animal. So today, drink freely. It helps to supply the necessities of the system and assist nature to resist diseases. So at least eight glasses of water should be drank every day. And if you're not sure if you're being hydrated, just check the color of your urine. Once it's clear, then you know that you're in good shape. But if it's dark, then it's possible that you are dehydrated. So today, water is needed to the fun in the function of the body. So drink freely and be healthy. Yeah.
I'm so happy that we are back with another message from God. And I'm happy that you would have taken your time out to join us as we feast on the Word of God. I pray tonight that wherever you are, God is going to minister His Word to your heart and you will some way, somehow find a place uh, in, your, in your life for the presence of God. That God will, will speak to you tonight wherever you are. We want to welcome those who are listening on the radio. We're glad to have you. God bless us and God bless you tonight. Uh, tonight we are going to look at the message running naked and hiding. However, however, tomorrow night, God's will, tomorrow night, shocking revelations about Cain and Abel. Shocking revelation about Cain and Abel. Tonight, running naked and hiding. Let us pray. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, here we are again. Another night where we want to hear a word from you. As I stand, stand by me. As I speak, speak through me. That above my voice will be heard the voice of Jesus saying, this is the way. Bless us now we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, again we refer to our opening scripture. We use this passage, like I said to you from night one, Romans chapter number 15 and verse 4 is our scripture that we're going to use for every message before we begin uh, get into the body of the message. Romans chapter number 15 and verse 4. By now everyone should know that passage of scripture. The Bible says, For whatsoever things were written, were written for our learning and our example. And so the Bible is saying to us tonight that we need to read the word of God and we need to learn from the word of God. And the Bible says that we are going to find comfort in the scripture. I don't know where you are and what you are going through now, but permit God's word to be a comfort to you tonight. And so let us go to the book of Genesis. That's where we're going to learn from tonight. Genesis chapter number 1. Reading verse number 1. The Bible says this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis chapter number 1 gives us a panoramic view, ladies and gentlemen, of the creation of this world. That God spake and things happened. Things came into existence. I want us to understand tonight. The, tonight the Bible says in, in verse 1, in the beginning God created uh, the world or the heaven and the earth. Contrary, ladies and gentlemen, to the popular belief. That this world came about because of a big bang. It was God that created this world. And we need to accept this by faith. That behind the creation or the putting together of this world. There is a powerful God. This did not come about. This wonderful world. This big world ladies and gentlemen. Uh, did not come about because of a big bang. God says. The Bible says that God created this world. And the Bible says that God, when you read Genesis chapter number 1, that God spake and things happened. And so God said, let there be light. And there was light. And I'm saying to us tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if your life is in darkness, that God can shine light in your life. Uh, or God can speak light in your life tonight if your, light is in dark, if your life is in darkness. And so we read through Genesis chapter number 11. Here's what the Bible says. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs, yielding seed, and fruit trees, yielding fruit after his kind. And when God spake, those things happened. Ladies and gentlemen, we read all through Genesis chapter number one. And we realize that light was spoke into being. Water was spoke into being, ladies and gentlemen. The plants were spoke into being. The animals came forth because of the word of God. Everything that existed apart from man came forth when God spoke. But when it came to the creation of mankind, it's a whole different story. Here is what the Bible says in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 24. The Bible says, And God says, Let us make man in our image. Ladies and gentlemen, when the animals were spoken into existence and 
the water and the plants were spoke into existence and even light was spoke into existence, the Bible says that God says, let us make man and make man in our own image. Watch this now. After all likeness, and let them have dominion over uh, the, the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. In verse number 27. In verse number 27. And God created man in his own image. Ladies and gentlemen, contrary to the popular belief or popular teaching that man evolved over a period of time, it was God, ladies and gentlemen, that created man in his own image. When it comes to the creation of man, could I declare to you tonight, there is no monkey business involved. It was the power, the creative power of God, and man was created in the image of God. No wonder why the psalmist David says, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Ladies and gentlemen, man came from the hand of the creator. And this is one of the reasons if man is going to succeed, if man is going to enjoy life, if man is going to live a healthy life, a man must remain in the hands of the creator. And so it is quite clear. It was God that made man. Now we move to Genesis chapter number 2. In Genesis chapter number 2, read in verse number 7. Here's what the Bible says. Verse number 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. So God who spoke animals into being, God who spoke water into being, God spoke the plants into existence. And the Bible says God get down and God took the dust of the ground. God formed this marvelous figure and then breathed into it the breath of life. And the Bible says that man became a living soul. Ladies and gentlemen, a body plus the spirit brings life. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, we are nothing without God but dust, ladies and gentlemen. This is why when we die, the Bible says, we return to the dust from where we came from. What makes life a what living, a what really makes us somebody is the fact that God, ladies and gentlemen, created us and breathed life into us, ladies and gentlemen. Outside of God, we are not nothing much. We are just dust outside of God. God add living and quality to life. And so the Bible says that God breathed into the nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. In verse number 20, verse number 20 of Genesis chapter number 2, the Bible says this, Genesis chapter number 2, verse 20, and Adam gave name to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But unto Adam there was not found a helpmate for him. So after God created a call into existence, the animals, and God would have created man, uh, Adam, God gave Adam a work to do. And Adam's work was to name the creatures. So when Adam said, Lion you shall be, Guess what? It is lion unto this day. And when Adam said, you shall be called tiger, a tiger it is unto this day. Ladies and gentlemen, that whatever Adam named them, God did not change them, and it remains with us today. But yet the things that God has done, man wants to change it. But the Bible says that after Adam named the animals, you see the animals were created in pair. Watch this now. The male with his female. So the male lion had the lioness. And the male cattle and the, and the female cattle, the male donkey and the, the female donkey, everything came in pair. Male with female, ladies and gentlemen. That is the plan of God as it relates to procreation. Because without the male and the female, the, the, the world, ladies and gentlemen, will not have no creatures like them. So this is why the, the intelligent God created male and female. The Bible said, however, after Adam finished this work, Adam realized that all the animals were paired up. Everybody got his male and his female. Every animal with his male and female. Ladies and gentlemen, but when it comes to Adam, the Bible says, 
not find a helpmate for him. There was no helpmate for Adam. And the Bible says in verse number 21, And the Lord God caused huh, a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his reeds and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the reeb which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto Adam. And Adam said, This is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So now Adam has his helmet, male and female. Adam, the male, and Eve, his wife, the female. The animals were male and female. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to quickly say to us tonight, the creation of woman was not an afterthought of God, but a master plan from God to man. I want to repeat that just in case somebody missed it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I declare to us tonight that the creation of woman was not an afterthought of God, but a master plan from God to man. Hence the reason why, my brother, you got to treat the woman right. Hence the reason why you got to learn to respect women and love women because God has created women for man. In the same way, let me say tonight, no man should get married to a woman unless he know how to treat a woman, how to love a woman, and how to respect a woman. But the flip side is also true. That no woman should have a man in her life except she know how to love him and how to respect him and how to treat him. And so the Bible says, the Bible says, man was created in the image of God. But look at what the Bible declares now, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that God, in chapter number 2, verse number 16, and God commanded man, saying, of all the trees that is in the garden of Eden, that is in the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. So God gave man work. God gave man a woman. And God gave man command or instructions. Ladies and gentlemen, even in a perfect environment, a sin-free environment, there was instructions for Adam and Eve to follow. I want us to understand this. Ladies and gentlemen, there can be no real life without instruction. And here's the reason why we need today to observe and to keep the laws of God or the instructions of God. But life quickly changed in the Garden of Eden. Life quickly changed in the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter number 3. Genesis chapter number 3. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field, which God, the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said unto thee, had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, we shall not eat of it, neither shall we touch it, lest we die. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Mother Eve's first mistake, or maybe one of her major mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that Eve stopped to speak to the serpent, because understand, the devil was talking through the serpent. The devil is a spirit, and it needs a medium to which to operate. The same so today, the voice of the devil can still be heard, and the devil sometimes used Beautiful people, powerful people, rich people, poor people to use them to bring his message across. We got to be careful who we are listening to because uh, sometimes uh, we are listening to the voice of the devil thinking that we are listening to the voice of God. And so if mistake was stopping to discuss God with a servant. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Many are making the same mistake of Eve. There are those who stop to discuss God with preachers. There are those who stop to discuss God with politicians. There are those who stop to discuss God with mother and father. You got to understand, you don't discuss or check out God with man. You need to check out man with God to ensure what man is saying is saying the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, as I preach this gospel, you got to ensure that you check me out with the word of God to make sure what I'm saying to you comes from the Bible. We got to understand because there are a lot of people today who are used by the devil to deceive others. And so she was having this discussion with the serpent, the devil. The Bible says in verse number 4, And the serpent said unto her, unto the woman, You shall not surely die. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, they born this false doctrine uh, that the soul never dies. The immortality of the soul. This they born, ladies and gentlemen, this false doctrine that when we die, we, don't, we are not really dead. But I declare to you tonight, God is a specific God. And whatever God says, ladies and gentlemen, God means it and God stands by it. There is nothing as such as a, a, an immortal soul, ladies and gentlemen. When we die, we are well dead and waiting for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Or waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. When we're dead, we are well dead, ladies and gentlemen. The idea that people say, when you die, you go to a certain place. A, a purgatory and people can pray for you to get you out of the place and then when you are good enough you get into heaven ladies and gentlemen that's a doctrine from the gates of hell a god says when you die you remain in the grave watch this now it is strange that sometimes you go to funerals have you ever been to a funeral service a loved one died a friend died somebody you know that and you're in the service you know that there is a casket or a coffin in front of the building and the preacher is up there and the preacher is saying that our brother and our sister is up in heaven looking down upon us right now well if the brother is up in heaven or the sister is up in heaven the question is who is in the casket ladies and gentlemen understand this that when you dead or when you die you're well dead there is nothing called an immortal soul that when you die your soul leave her no you go to the grave or the place where they put you to rest and you're gonna be there until the second coming of jesus christ whether you wake up to the resurrection with the righteous or you wake up to the resurrection of those that will face hell fire but that's where you will be so there is nothing about your grandmother and your grandfather coming back to visit you no that that's 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 from the gates of hell ladies and gentlemen look at what the bible says look at what the bible says verse number five the devil said to her for god do i know that in the day that thou eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and it shall be and it shall be as god <laughs> knowing good and evil and when the woman saw that the fruit was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be uh, desired to make one wise she took, did took of the fruit and did eat and gave unto her husband with her and he did eat so the bible says after the chat with the devil after the serpent he spoke the devil spoke through the serpent the two Eve after Eve had this conversation this back and forth with the devil the devil convinced her that God is a liar ladies and gentlemen and God is the only one that cannot tell a lie so this is why we should stick with the word of God this is why we should stick with the principles of the word of God and so now Eve is seeing things differently I can remember one year I can remember one year preaching this gospel and this woman came to me after preaching one night and she said to me preacher listen I understand all that you're saying and everything that you're saying you, you, you take it from the word of God but my pastor said listen ladies and gentlemen it's not what your pastor said it's not what the priest said it's not what the bishop said it's not even what I said it's what we need to follow the straight testimony or the straight word of God there is this false doctrine or teaching that a forbidden fruit was sexual intimacy that is so far from the truth. And let me tell you why. Adam and Eve 
were enjoying sexual intimacy even before sin. But watch this, watch this here. The Bible says she picked up the fruit, she did eat some first, and then gave some to her husband. So in the forbidden fruit was sex, ladies and gentlemen, or sexual intimacy. It means that Eve must first have sexual intimacy with herself and then gave Adam some. Ladies and gentlemen, the fruit was a fruit. So the Bible says, in verse number 7, And the eyes of both of them was open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and hid themselves. The Bible says, And the eyes of both of them was open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made what? Aprons. They make aprons and they cover themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the Bible saying here? That Adam and Eve was not created with clothes. Adam and Eve, well, they did not go to some place and get clothes to put on when they were created. But you got to understand, when Adam and Eve were created in the image of God, they were covered with the glory of God. Covered with the glory of God. But after sin, the glory of God departed, ladies and gentlemen. So now shame and disgrace and nakedness show up. You got to understand, every time we go against the principles of God, every time we go against the word of God, every time we go against the, the commandments of God, we are bare naked, ladies and gentlemen. We are naked, running and hiding. So Adam, the Bible says, they took fig leaves and they made aprons. But ladies and gentlemen, aprons was never meant for total covering. Oh, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Aprons were never meant for total covering. Aprons are partial covering. Watch this now. If you don't believe the preacher, go to a restaurant, go in the kitchen, go to a hotel, go in the kitchen, and you will see the cook, the kitchen staff. They have an apron that have partial covering of the front. Ladies and gentlemen, this is saying to us tonight that the only covering for our sin and our shame, ladies and gentlemen, is the blood of Jesus Christ or the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Oh, we are fully covered when we are covered with the blood and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So I declare to you tonight, if you want shade from sin, if you want covering from sin, don't run from God, run to God, and God is going to wash you, God is going to make you pure, and God is going to cover you with his garb of righteousness. There are a lot of people today who are still running, naked, and hiding. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible continues in verse number 8. The Bible says, Adam and Eve no hiding. In verse number 8 it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God, the Lord God, among the trees in the garden. And the Lord God called out unto Adam and said unto him, Where thou? Why did God call the woman? Why did God call out Eve first? After all, Eve was the one that was tempted by the devil. But you've got to understand that men play a special role in society. Men play a special role in the family. It is up on the shoulder of the man to ensure that the children get to know Jesus Christ. It is up on the shoulder of the man to be the priest of the home. And the world is suffering right now for lack of real men. Men that know God. Men that love God. And men that will lead their family to the altar of God. I'm saying to us tonight that God is calling. God called out to Adam and God is calling for you tonight, man. You tonight, gentlemen. God is calling out. Where now? And this was not a call to find out Adam's geographic location because God knew exactly where Adam was. Adam's geographic location was well known by God. We cannot hide from God, but God was about to awaken in him the fact that he is now lost, ladies and gentlemen, that he is running from the one we once used to worship. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare to you tonight that there are a lot of people are still running from the voice of God, just as there are a lot of people who are still discussing God with the devil. I say to you tonight, we don't need to run from God. We don't need to run from God. We need to run to God so that God can wash us and make us pure. Can somebody say amen? And God asked Adam three questions. Three questions. Here's what God asked. God said, and I said unto him, um, I heard that voice, verse number 11. 
And he said, who told you? One, that you were naked. Two, has thou eaten of the tree that I told you? I commanded thee that thou mayest not eat. So these two questions, these two questions God asked, well, three questions. One, where are thou? Who told you that you are naked? And have you eaten of the fruit? So watch this, ladies and gentlemen. God first called out to him, where are thou? And I ask you this question tonight, as it relates to the principles of God, as it relates to the commandments of God, as it relates to the word of God, where are you? Are you close enough? Are you far away from God? Are you hiding behind religion? Are you hiding behind some name? Are you hiding behind something? I'm, this, I'm, I'm saying to you tonight, you need to come out of hiding because God, there is no hiding place down here. Ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do is to run to God so that God can wash us and cleanse us and make us pure. So these three questions, these three questions, where are thou? Who told you were naked? And did you eat? It says to us tonight that when we break the commandments of God, we are hiding, we are running, we are naked, and we are hiding. But I have good news tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I got good news tonight as we come to a close. <laughs> I've got good news tonight. Here's what the Bible said in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 53. Isaiah is the book. The chapter number is 53. We don't need to hide from God. The Bible says in Isaiah, Chapter number 53. I read in verse number 5. The Bible declares tonight, Isaiah 53, and verse number 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, ladies and gentlemen. And with his stripes, we are healed. Tonight, you can get healing in Jesus Christ. Because somebody says there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I have experienced the power of the blood. And tonight is your opportunity to experience the power of the blood. Instead of running, come to Jesus and let him wash you and make you white as snow. The Bible says Jesus died. He was wounded for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And tonight we can be healed. We can be healed tonight. What the Bible says? In Isaiah 59, as we close, our last text for tonight. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is his air heavy that he cannot hear. But our iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we got to understand that God's plan is our salvation. God wants to save us, the devil wants us dead in our sin. Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But thank God the Bible declares that Jesus came, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And that abundant life could be yours tonight. The question is, will you stop running away from God and run to God? Will you stop running tonight? I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for you. Let us bow. Let us bow. Let us bow for prayer. Great God in heaven, thank you for the message tonight. Thank you for your word that we would have learned from tonight. That we need not like Adam and Eve run from you, but we can run to you. We need not like Adam and Eve create something to cover our sinful life, but we can come to Jesus so that our sin can be washed and we can be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that is listening to this broadcast tonight, whether by radio, or Facebook, or whatever platform they are tuning onto. I pray, O oh God, that you may cover them, that I may give you an opportunity in their life tonight, and that you may cover them with the power of your blood and of your righteousness. Thank you, God, for great things that you are about to do. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen.